So a lot of things have happened over the last few days when it comes to Halo Infinite news and information, and I wanted to cover that in this video with you guys. Talking about that world premiere that seemed to be really disliked by the community. Additional news has been leaked out about the gameplay aspects of the Halo Infinite Battle Royale mode, as well as when Infection will come to Halo Infinite. Now this video will be a bit longer, so I have time steps throughout this entire video. You guys want to skip to exactly what you want to learn about, but I highly suggest you stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. So first we'll stop the stuff that just happened yesterday and that was the hcs orlando event just concluded with optic gaming coming out on top on first place with cloud nine phase sentinels running off the top four and various other teams finishing that up as well this was a very close event it was really cool to see a lot of shakeouts when it comes to the placements and games were super close and tight i cannot wait for the world's event happening which is happening next month in seattle which i will be attending if you guys want to be there make sure to stop by and say hi and I hope you guys had your Twitch accounts linked up with your Xbox account because the Gladiator's Edge Commando was the Grand Finals reward. I did earn it. It looks pretty awesome. I mean, it's kind of the same thing as like, the sidekick that we had previously, but this time on the Commando, which the Commando definitely needs a lot of coding, so this is a really great addition. But during the event yesterday, I'm sure the big thing a lot of you guys were looking forward to was the big world premiere announcement coming from Halo Infinite. Now, when you hear the word world premiere, what do you think? World premiere. And then normally there's a big game announcement, some really crazy cool thing for you to jump in and play and then get involved with the Xbox and ecosystem, right? Uh, well, Halo Infinite and 343 were trying to do something very similar and kind of just more led people on rather than setting expectations properly. I mean, this tweet just kind of set it all up here, right? Saying, oh, did we mention that there will be a Halo Infinite world premiere for the throwback throwdown? Wonder what that could be. Of course, involving Halo 3 on Halo 3's anniversary makes you really think, okay, something Halo 3 involved is going to happen. And it's going to be really awesome. Well, slightly yes and slightly no. We ended up getting this remake of The Pit, which to me looks really awesome. I'm really happy to see that this is coming back. This actually is kind of interesting as it kind of goes back on what 343 stated before the launch of the game, saying that they weren't looking to do any true remakes when it comes to Halo Infinite. I mean, that could be true to death maps, but maybe fourth maps are a little different when it comes to that stuff. Uh, so I'm excited to have this classic map come into the game. Now, the 343 Forge dev did come onto their live stream saying that they did scale the map properly for Halo Infinite's gameplay. I did see some parts where, like, instead of a crouch jump, it's more of a clamber kind of position. So it's not like a direct one-to-one -one recreation of the pit. It's more of a modification of the pit to work better with Halo Infinite's gameplay. Uh, I definitely do know some minor changes when it comes to, like, like the gameplay of like some of the corners and stuff like that but for the most part it looks rather faithful though a lot of people were not very happy about this and i think mainly that's because it was so built up to be a world premiere like when you hear that you think of a huge thing that's going to happen people are thinking like oh my god they're going to announce the battle rail they're going to announce halo 3 anniversary or something like that which all of those were declined by 343 before the launch of this besides the battle rail obviously they didn't say anything about that so when people actually got this map revealed to them well uh they weren't too happy about it if you guys enjoy these types of news and discussion videos make sure you tap that like button let me know you want to see some more content like this and it helps out the channel immensely you can see here on youtube with the pit fly through it they have an overwhelming dislike ratio of 343 wow that's very canny uh likes to 525 dislikes but even worse on the world premiere video it's 319 likes to 1.5k dislikes so people are not happy about this world premiere because i think they've had improper expectations but the thing is that like when you use the word world premiere it's a uh, well it's gonna generate a lot of hype and you might get a lot of people down when it's just a forge map i saw a lot of people saying that they didn't like the version of this forge map either it's too purple the colors are way off and things like that and some people have even gone in to redo it which streamer accelerate did this kind of color correction version as you can see right here of the map where it actually kind of looks a little better and the remastered of his version of the map uh, just, I would say that the purple definitely just seemed like a little too dark or just like a little off-putting. Something about it just doesn't really feel super right. Even when I was waiting to make a more true to the original version of it, which is more just bringing yellows instead of purples. But you can see how some aspects of this map definitely do feel a bit too dark and it might be kind of difficult when it comes to visibility. Uh, from the gameplay I saw, it didn't really seem like it was too rough, but I think just people were just off-put because it was just different rather than, well, a true 
recreation. And given the current sentiment of the player base, I can understand why all the dislikes, but it's kind of interesting where I saw people saying like, wow, they took this long to release one Forge map. Like, how does it take that long when people can recreate these things like within a week or something like that? Well, the Forge lead, Michael Shore, actually talks about the process of making this map. It wasn't like super fast. Like. I mean, um, I think Golden Boy earlier said something about two weeks. It was not two weeks. <laughs> it was not. It was not that fast. Um, you know, maps do take time. Yeah. You know, and yeah. There's, you know, there's, there's a process that you got to go through, and you know, like I said on stage, we spent, you know, we spent at least six weeks testing the, um, just the block out. So yeah, six weeks and just block testing the map, which is crazy. But I think the problem is that when 343 rakes a official Forge map, right, and there's so many people out there that need to put their own vision onto it or make sure it hits like their quality of what they want the map to play out like it definitely can take a lot of time especially when you have other things you're working on like getting forge working in the first place so when you're just one person forging in your bedroom trying to make something cool happen like yeah probably won't take that long but when you have an entire team and then you have to make it like an official forge release and play test the heck out of it and make sure there's no bugs or glitches or any kind of way you can get out of the map or something like that you definitely take a lot more time than you expect. Especially since Forge is not just like your social, just like make some wacky boxes and call it a map. Like it's a legit dev tool now. I know some people were upset that it was only just one Forge map that we will be getting sometime after the launch of the winter update, which is the most 343 thing I've ever heard. But <laughs> it's, I think there's something more coming along with this as well as we covered multiple times on the channel. Uh, Unique, who was forging a map, Guardian, uh, got contacted by 343. I just got a... Twitter message from Unishek, a DM. He wants to talk Halo stuff. But I told you guys if this was gonna happen, uh, I'd most likely have to go under a NDA. If you guys don't know what an NDA is, it's a non-disclosure agreement. Meaning, the stuff he tells me, I would not be able to tell anybody. NDA'd out of his mind. Other leaks and rumors suggest Narrows will be a part of the Halo 3 map pack in a way if you wanna call it that. But I think that we'll actually get like a bit of a cool content drop sometime during the winter update. Maybe even part of the winter contingency update. Not totally sure about that, but we definitely know these maps will be coming into the game sometime during the winter update season. Of course, whenever we get that information, I'll share it with you guys here on the channel. Now this news this happened last week, but I just want to make sure we're all on the same page because I did see some confusion about this. People were going like, where are the yapping? I thought it was stained. Well, that's because the Yappening was actually renamed on Tuesday to B2B Social as it became one of the most popular modes in Halo Infinite. I think it just kind of goes to show that if you kind of lean into the social aspect of the game, people actually will genuinely enjoy it. And also Land Grab is no longer its own playlist. Though Land Grab will be back as Entrenched is returning this week on the 27th, guys. So you'll be able to jump in and play that. And also for its final week on October 25th. Though, after that, you'll see Land Grab then roll into the Quick Play playlist after November 8th, which is very interestingly, the most played mode in Halo Infinite, Quick Play. That was very surprising for me. And then Ranked Arena, I was actually genuinely happily surprised that it was number two and Team Slayer was number four, which is kind of funny. And sadly, we did lose last Spartan and Sanding, but that's because it was only 1% of all player activity, which was really surprising as it was one of my favorite modes in the game. I was sad to see it go. But, hey, if people aren't playing it, there's no point in keeping it in the game, you know? And also, since we're talking about updates, guys, it does seem like there's going to be a sandbox update coming with the winter updates. And I'll show you guys why in this clip right here. All right, Barry Hill, from your, from your sandbox expertise, <laughs> most underrated weapon right now in the Pulse game. Carbine. Really? Okay. Really, really. Uh, I play a lot with the Competitive Insights team, and it's a must pick up for them. Uh, they do some really good work with it. Uh, I had a challenge actually where I had to use the Pulse Carbine and uh, helped me learn how to use that. Uh, Interesting. Uh, we do have a buff version on our end, uh, but hopefully that's coming to our players soon. Oh, so you're. Okay. Maybe I'm just biased yeah. towards the, the you're demoing, dev version. Uh, an updated version is what I'm hearing. <laughs> so we don't know what you're talking about yet, but right. okay. So I like Sketch's response right there, being like, oh, I don't think we know what you're talking about right there. Like, okay, I, you kind of let the cat out of the bag a little early on that one. So it does seem like there's going to be some kind of sandbox update happening with the winter update. I feel weird saying update back to back so many times, but that's what they're calling it. I do plan to release a video on my channel kind of going through all the bits of equipment and all the weapons and talk about what they should buff and what they should nerf when it comes to the sandbox. I uh, should probably see that video within a week or two. As someone who has nearly 500 hours put into Halo Infinite, I've definitely played around with the sandbox enough to know that 
what should be working as intended and what kind of needs some help. All right, now let's get into some of the leaks and juicy Battle Royale news. Incredible leaker Serasia recently posted this up saying arena infection in the game at least, but it's also replied to the saying season four on top of that. So I'm sure a lot of you guys got really excited about seeing Infection in the title of this video. I mean, I'm definitely looking forward to getting a chance to play Infection. And I can understand why it's not in the game because we don't have Forge in quite yet. Forge is a mo game mode that's going to be super dependent on making sure you can make proper maps so then Infection can play out properly. Because can you imagine playing Infection on like Bazaar? It's just not going to play out very well. But Season 4, dude, that's like not until like June, right? That's so far away to put in Infection. Like why does it need to have that much time? I guarantee you the community is gonna make Infection before 343 does, which is definitely be gonna be weird. I've already seen Forge leaked videos that people are already making Infection. They're making like Call of Duty Zombies barricade breakdown stuff within the game and it's not even out yet with Forge. Again, I feel like this kind of builds into what we're kind of expecting to see. Halo Infinite not really being in full steam ahead, probably not till the end of 2020. And then our cool leak from Sarasia as well, showcasing Arena Escalation, which is basically a gun game that we had from MCC being brought in Halo Infinite. That's going to be a fun social mode right there, as well as Classic Arena VIP, which 343 talked about previously, bringing the VIP into the game. Now we have some Tatanka news, guys. Just to make sure we're all on the same page here when I drop this bit of sad info about Tatanka. This is actually the first ever interview that we've had with a certain affinity, actually confirming that they're working on some large scale mode with Halo Infinite. And they said this is the biggest project that they're working on right now. And they've worked with like Call of Duty, they've worked with Halo and a ton of other really high profile games. So when Certain Infinity says they're working on something that's really big, it's really big. Saying that they're doing the lead development on this unannounced thing from conception and design it is something big and new to the franchise. And they have close to 100 people developing on it as well. So this is their biggest, single bit largest project that they're working on right now, which is super exciting to see that they're putting this much effort into a, a mode for Halo Infinite. Now we've seen so many leaks about Tatanka. I mean, we have like the free for all, the triples, the quads modes that we have coming in here as well. We've seen this leak kind of showcasing the, how like there's a down state, a drop sequence, gear cache. There's these operations that are like seem to be more like objectives within the game. So it'd be like a capture, a destroy, a horde mode version, supply runs, things like that. A weapon upgrade system, it sounds like. But what if I told you there's some new information about the game gameplay of Tatanka, aka the Battle Royale. Now the summarized leak from Bathrobe Spartan, who we've covered previously on the channel, who was dead on about the two Forge maps that were announced for the winter update coming into the game as well, saying that all things we found made us believe that certain Infinity and 343 Industries are creating a different kind of BR game. While it's still about doing a top one type of finish, you seem to have much more control about the loot and how you get it. Basically, you're playing classic game types, control a zone, bring an objective from point A, etc. of Halo within a giant map. It's not only about eliminating players to get their loot, it's about playing objectives to increase your loot and the control you have over it. It seems to be done this way so you rely less on RNG and luck to get your loadout, but more on tactical decisions and strategy. In the end, they're bringing Halo classic gameplay to a battle royale, rather than injecting battle royale into Halo with a very straightforward FPS gameplay without too much much worries about the resource management and such. So that sounds rather incredible right there and a very different take on the battle royale genre, which I think would be pretty good. It still seems like it has like the finished top last person standing kind of thing, which is definitely needed for a battle royale to feel like a battle royale. But it sounds like they're definitely focusing much more on what is true to Halo's gameplay, but mixing it up in a battle royale kind of sense, which I think is perfect. That's one of the things that's always kind of kept me away from battle royales is one, that it involves a different type of play style, which I normally just like playing like my fast paced 6v6 Call of Duty, my 4v4 Halo and stuff like that. Having the micromanage your inventory system, it just seems to always be a pain with me. And so much is reliant on RNG, random stuff that happened to just get lucky to win the game. So if 343 and Insert Infinity are making a battle royale that's more reliant on skill and decision making, well, then count me in. But guys, it seems like there's some bad news with this though. As most people are anticipating the Battle Royale to release at the end of 2023, right guys? Uh, since we didn't hear anything about it during the Xbox Bethesda Showcase, Serasia, again, our familiar leaker friend over here, 
tweeted out saying, Tatan delayed and replying to that tweet with the number 24, obviously meaning 2024, which is absolutely gut wrenching to me if this is actually true. Now, when in 2024, we don't know. It could be early 2024. It could be like in March in 2024. But again, it just feels so far out for us to get something that's really gonna be bringing new people into the game, which has always been the major objective of 343 since they've been handling the Halo franchise. But just like another delay if that's actually happening i uh my patience is so thin it's it's going to break then on some happier news it seems like we're going to get some more information about forge this week as well can we get another early release the, of the week maybe we'll see what happens but this week it seems like it's going to be about lighting and audio which is going to be a huge part about the visual styles of the map it does seem like also that there will be abilities for you to kind of code where you want different sound effects that happen on the map which is gonna be cool though this might actually get our chance to see what the baked lighting will look like in halo infinite's forge as if all the forge leaks that you've seen guys right now that's unfinished that's not the final visual art style that we're pushing for for halo infinite they say that the baked lighting is not in the leaked build right now so the lighting will actually look better the graphics of these maps will actually look better with the release of this game mode so i'm super excited to see what this has to offer again lighting and audio doesn't really sound that entertaining or crazy to talk about but it's gonna be crucial to have a proper aesthetic and feel when it comes to your forge maps really lower that distance between dev maps and forge maps it's almost like they're basically the same thing at this point now with 343 just getting off of the hts orlando hype michael shore was there as well they need to fly back in most likely on monday that if they are going to do a reveal it would probably be more towards like a friday or thursday reveal again once we get the final date guys i'll share it with you guys here on the channel if you want to hear what the 343 forge lead had to say about the recreation of the pit well check out this video right here thank you very much for watching i'll catch you on the next one peace out